Let's consider together Mercury and Saturn. Now, Mercury and Saturn, they are of the same grouping and they can often work very well together. Mercury helps Saturn out quite significantly when he is with Saturn. However, typically Saturn will be starving Mercury. In fact, anytime Saturn is in conjunction with in the same sign of um, any planet, um, that Saturn will be starving that planet. So Mercury and Saturn can be good for various things, but it's always going to have a sense of difficulty going towards Mercury. Now they can work much better if they're simply in opposition to each other, uh, or if they are mutually aspecting each other or in each other's signs without being conjunct. Now what is Mercury? Mercury is thinking. Mercury is discrimination. And what is Saturn? Saturn is a sense of focus, but Saturn is also a sense um, of restriction. So when we put these two plants together, on a negative standpoint, we can see one's mind getting fixated on negative things, what one perceives being focused on negative things. That's when we get Saturn and Mercury together. However, if we're in a profession or career or situation where we have to think very deeply and in a very focused, technical fashion um, with great detail, the Mercury and Saturn combination can do very well for an individual. But we have to remember, as with all combinations, they're good for some things and not so good for others. In the same way that when you get a strong Mars, well, that can be great for being logical and solving problems and defending people, but maybe it's not so good for your relationships because you bring that aggression into your relationships. So you're rarely ever going to find uh, combinations that are all um, one-sided in regards to their um, positive or negative influences within a person's life. So with this Mercury and Saturn, it allows a person to focus well, deeply, on details. It can again make a person very shrewd and stubborn in their business transactions. Although it can give good natural instincts in business, and it can also give a person a lot of patience and persistence in long-term planning um, in business, or long-term planning in general. Uh, oftentimes Mercury and Saturn combinations can get a person interested in or involved with um, quality improvement or improvement of business models or just in general trying to find ways to improve situations by focusing on problems which is Saturn and looking all around looking at all the different <coughs> possibilities which is Mercury uh, to come up with the best solution so with Mercury and Saturn combinations, we can also find a person who might have a lot of problems, but they're able to get through those problems because that Mercury, through Lajitati of Ashtas, will delight Saturn <clears throat> and will give the person the ability to do research, analysis, to see all the possibilities of what can happen in a particular situation, and then if other aspects of the chart are supportive, uh, to make appropriate choices. Now again, some more negative influences of this Mercury-Saturn combination. Um, at times it can make a person a bit deceptive or compulsive or obsessive. Uh, and why is that? Because when you've got Mercury, which is trying to figure things out, think things through, be discriminative, and you've got that Saturn there, oftentimes all the person can see are problems. Or all they can see is they can get out of these problems through untruths or lying. We know that when Saturn's not doing too well, he can make a person prone um, to lying and deception. It can make a person too focused on the details. Again, this is when you get a myopic mind or a myopic viewpoint, which is opposite to, say, the Mercury-Jupiter combination, where the person is able to see all different uh, viewpoints. But now we have Mercury and Saturn, where the person can only see one hard, difficult path. So it makes it hard for the individual to see other possibilities. Um, it makes it hard for the person to be open to accepting advice because, again, they're still focused on one particular path. Uh, oftentimes there can be mental disturbances and stubbornness, and the mental disturbances come from focusing too much on the problems. It can result in things like depression or even what you might perceive to be learning disabilities. 
Now, one of the other difficulties with Mercury and Saturn, these are not necessarily, when you've got a Mercury and Saturn combination, you're less likely to have good luck with astrologers or anyone really who's going to give you advice. Why is that? Because with Mercury and Saturn, you're always going to find a problem with whatever anyone else says. And when you've got a habit of doing that, doesn't matter who the astrologer is, doesn't matter what kind of advice you're given by anyone, again, not even astrologers, it can be medical advice, it can be financial advice, it can be relationship advice, you either find a problem with the advice that is given, or you'll find a problem with the person who's giving the advice, and you'll doubt it, a Saturn-related issue, and you'll keep asking, well, what else is there? What, what more is there? And when you have a Mercury-Saturn combination, oftentimes you go to many astrologers, and you're never satisfied, because you will always find a problem with what your advisor is, is saying to you. So it makes it hard to develop a sense of faith, which is why if, on the opposite end of that spectrum, Mercury-Jupiter combinations, that person can almost always get good advice from an astrologer. Even an astrologer who's just started studying astrology two weeks ago, whatever that person has studied, they will be able to speak to an individual with a Mercury-Jupiter combination, and that Mercury-Jupiter person will hear just the right thing and go with it. With Mercury-Saturn, it doesn't matter if the person's been studying two weeks, two years, or 20 years. They'll say, yes, but this other astrologer said that, but what about this technique? And they're so caught up in the analysis of their mind. And astrology, at least at this point in time, is not real easy about making things... Um, uh, allowing astrologers to come up with similar, what's the word, uh, similar information across the board because there isn't really a consensus on how to approach the reading of an astrological chart. There's a general one, but, you know, some people might say, well, look at the Upapada. Other people says, look at the Karakamsha. Someone says, look at the, um, you know, 11th from the Swamsha. You know, they'll pick all these things. And when you get a Mercury-Jupiter, excuse me, when you get a Mercury-Saturn person, they'll know all these things, and they'll see all the differences and all the um, negative confluence and how there's contradictions and so on, and all they focus on is the contradictions. They're not able to necessarily see the good information that comes uh, from an astrologer or any con person you're going to get consulting, um, you're going to consult with. So this is why we can even say that this can cause a person to have learning disabilities. It might not necessarily be that the person is unintelligent. It might be that they have a very hyper-focused intelligence, and yet they're only able to see one particular uh, thread or stream of thought. So they're not able to perceive how m multiple things fit together, how the bigger picture fits together. So Mercury-Saturn individuals, uh, these are not easy people to give astrology readings to, and that's because most of the time they don't get a lot out of astrology, or they're not able to get past that uh, fixation of Mercury and Saturn to trust and have faith. And that's really what is required with Mercury and Saturn. Um, you know, we come to astrologers to know that Mercury-Saturn Mercury individuals, they come to astrologers to say, I want to know the next step I'm going to take is the right one. I want to find the astrologer who can predict. Every time I contact them, they will tell me the exact right way to go. The one that I think is the right way to go, really, is what they mean. Because you can't ever go the wrong way, just so you know that. You can't ever go the wrong way. Um, and in this mysterious world, this mysterious consciousness, we're never going to be proven whether something's right or not until we actually take a step to see. Right, you know, the astrologer, the financial advisor, the health practitioner—they're just looking at trends and they're saying, "Well, this is the probability," but you have to try it and see what happens. And if that doesn't work, well, go back to the drawing board, speak to your advisor, speak to your counselor, try the next most educated path, <laughs> and that's how you figure it out. So, talking to a consultant is great. Talking to a business consultant is great, but there's no business consultant which gives 100% accuracy all the time. They might give 100% accuracy 50% of the time, <laughs> but not all the time. And we're going to find this true with uh, astrologers as well. Um, so with Mercury and Saturn, it can be a very wonderful combination for technical orientation, for deep and detailed thinking. But a major drawback to this combination is being too obsessively stuck in a particular expectation of how things should go or really only seeing the weaknesses and the problems in advice that you get or weaknesses and problems in whatever house that these are placed in. So figure out whatever house Mercury and Saturn are placed in in your chart. 
figure out what that house represents. Again, you can go to um, the house description videos on this channel, youtube.com slash Ryan's Vedic Astrology. They're either in the playlist tab or just scroll through the videos. And when you find out what house it's in, this combination, then that's going to tell you where you might have these difficulties or where you might have these strengths. And by becoming more aware of it, um, more understanding of uh, the pluses and minuses of a Mercury-Saturn combination, uh, the more conscious you're going to be able to work with your life and not necessarily be so mentally disturbed, because you'll know it's just a habit from uh, astrological influences. And you'll hopefully be able to train yourself to have a little more faith and maybe tap more into your Jupiter, to be more expansive, um, more trusting, more tapping into your mercury doing trial and error just see what works and then you learn write it down if you have to and then don't do that don't make that mistake again and continue on with your life in that way but the hard thing with mercury and saturn is they're always 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 looking for certainty generally speaking but they'll most specifically be looking for certainty in regards to the houses that um, these planets are influencing so certainty is something you're never going to find in this world. I'm just going to tell you that right now. <laughs> so you can keep on searching and waste the rest of your, you know, what, 20, 30, 40, 50 years that you've got left on the planet looking for certainty. Um, or you can develop a greater sense of faith and adventure in this life and realize that no one makes it out of here alive. And, you know, as soon as you have life, well, the certainty of life is death. <laughs> um, not to be morbid with you, but this is a Mercury-Saturn discussion and we do need to be very realistic about this which is uh, Saturn but we also need to be discriminating discerning which is Mercury and that can lead to greater faith by the way just so you know exploring reality being able to, to walk up to the mystery and to face it and not define it and be scared out of your mind but then be overcome by all A-W-E all and then accept it and love it well, that's where you've taken that, that analysis of Mercury, that deep focus of Saturn, and you release yourself into the bigger picture of Jupiter, and then you're balanced with all three of those planets, actually. So remember that astrology ultimately is not about predicting when you're going to get married, because that'll happen when it's going to happen, so there's no real reason to worry about it. Um, it's about greater self-understanding, so you quit torturing yourself. <laughs> so you quit beating your head into a wall, um, so you quit trying to stab yourself to make sure that you're alive. Um, this is really the, the blessing of astrology, is greater self-awareness. So that you quit hurting yourself. And Mercury and Saturn people often do have a tendency to hurt themselves out of hyper-focus, um, an obsessive-compulsive need for certainty, and uh, a lack of appreciating the bigger picture in life. So anytime you get Mercury and Saturn combinations in transit, meaning Mercury is going to move into the same sign with Saturn, and you've got this combination, this will become more active for you, meaning um, you'll notice it more during those times. Uh, if you want to watch those transits, well, whatever house those transits occur in, in your birth chart, find out what those houses represent. And that's where you're going to have more difficulty, more focus on problems, um, maybe a little more hyper-focused. And you can use that to to problem solve, certainly, but you want to make sure that you don't use it to get locked into a pattern of negative thinking, which is uh, often common with Mercury-Saturn combinations. So training yourself through uh, yogic meditation or neurofeedback or things of this nature can be very helpful. Um, I have another channel, youtube.com slash kriyayogaonline, K-R-I-Y-A, yoga online, uh, where you can learn some helpful meditation techniques and thoughts. Uh, also, I have some downloadable courses at astralvedicastrology.com um, under the Learn Kriya Yoga tab, uh, <clears throat> which can help you hopefully eventually transcend the mind and the hyper-focus on negativity to develop a greater sense of faith and trust in this mysterious life that, we're, that we are, essentially. So consider that, and at the end of the day, you really got to quit taking yourself so seriously.